welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about a topic of personal interest to me, which is adapting the three-part drill for students with visual impairments. This is not something that can be done virtually, so this is not going to go with the current theme of my channel, but it's been an interest of mine for a long time, and I'd really like to get the ideas out there. One of my goals is eventually to use Orton-Gillingham method to teach Braille, at the current moment, I have not had any visually impaired or blind students, so I have not done this. However, I want to get the ideas out there so that maybe you can use them or adapt them to your individual student needs or your setting. So what I have here are the materials you would need to adapt the three-part drill um, to a student with visual impairments. This is not expensive stuff, and most of it came from a thrift store. This is a six cup muffin tin with six um, tennis balls in it. All of those things came from a thrift store for a total cost of less than a dollar. I have a piece of felt from Walmart for 23 cents. I have loop side Velcro, the rough Velcro. You can kind of hear it crunching. Um, the Velcro coins, I buy those in a pack of 1,000 sets for $10 online. This is a bag of generic um, Scrabble letter tiles. I bought those, I believe, for $300 for $10. And this is a brailler, a manual brailler, and a stylus. I bought that online for less than $10. One thing that is not up here that should be is my Braille tape. So I'll put it with the Brailler. That cost, oh, I don't really remember, but I want to say less than $5. And then this is a copy of the Braille alphabet that I printed off of the internet. Because I am still on quarantine, I cannot go and print a fresher copy for you. So this is just the one I have in my classroom. Now I also have, not shown here, um, a booklet of grade 2 Braille forms because as you know if you do um, teach Braille there are um, some contracted for some contracted letters in Braille that do not appear in um, standard visual text so you might have like a n I believe is a contraction so that's something that you would have to add to your Orton Gillingham sequence where you feel it's appropriate once your student has mastered um, see through QU. So I'm just going to focus on the alphabet today because that is what I'm most comfortable with and that is what I know um, best. So I'm going to start by showing you how to make a simple um, quote unquote at visual drill adaptation. Now obviously when we're talking about individuals who are blind or visually impaired visual drill is not going to be as useful or as meaningful so we're going to make it into a tactile kinesthetic drill instead, but we're going to focus on that concept of really reviewing one letter at a time, um, letters that the student already knows or that the student has been taught so that they can really practice that and build that mastery. So what I have here on my felt are some letter cards. Now I know that if I have a student who's learning Braille, teaching them to read the print alphabet may or may not be useful to them. Many Braille readers also read enlarged print. Um, but my focus here is Braille, so I really want to make sure that tactile piece is accessible to them. And because Braille is regulated size, it's a specific size, there's regular Braille and then there's large Braille, I can't use big old cards like I do for my visual warm-up. So this would have to be something that's done one-on-one -on -one with the student. And what I've done, you can't really see it here, is I've taken my Scrabble tile, which is labeled with a letter. That helps me as a sighted person to know um, what the letter is and how to orient it correctly. Um, but what I've done is I've just taken a piece of sticky braille tape with the letter M on it and I've stuck it to the tile so that it's tactile. And I've put a Velcro coin on the back so it'll stick to my felt. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's say I want to make go with letter O. It's one of our early, early vowels. So I want to make letter O. Now there's a couple of different things that I can do with this. I can put on a line to show how it's oriented. Um, if that's going to help me, I could 
glue some yarn to make it orient correctly to show where the bottom is. Um, if I want to have my student be a little more independent with this drill, but I'm just going to make the basic piece. Another thing I can do that would be helpful for um, when you have letters that go at the beginning or the end of a word, such as M, is to put some kind of color coding in the corner that tells me is this the initial M or is this the ending M. Now, obviously, O is a vowel, it only goes in the middle, so I don't necessarily need to color code that for myself. But if I want to make that a little orange dot up here, that's something that I could do as well. So what I'm going to do, oh, you can't really see what I'm doing. I'm going to take my, bra my brailler, my manual brailler, and I'm going to pop it open. I love these little things. They're so easy to use and they look so cool. And I'm going to stick my braille tape on the inside. Make sure it's lined up. And correct spacing is very, very important in braille. And I'm going to squeeze it shut. Now this one is designed specifically to braille labels. So you can see it's only got one row and it's not a very long row. You could do this with a larger manual brailler, but it's going to be a lot harder to get everything lined up just right. So I went ahead and bought the one that works just for label tape because I also use this to label everything in my classroom. So I'm going to look at my chart and I see how do I make O. And I can do this without looking, but you could also look. If you're going to look, the thing to remember is that it's going to be backwards and upside down. So I prefer to just do it without looking. And the little guides, you can see the little guides in here, tell me where the dots can go. I can't make a dot anywhere else aside from where it's supposed to be. So when I open this up, now you can see it. There's a little more contrast when it's got that white background and you've got the O, just like it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. And the lovely thing about this stuff is it makes a little sticker that I can stick to anything I want. The not so lovely part is trying to get that back piece off. So once I've peeled the back off, I'm going to stick it on my letter O. And because orientation and where things are and the distance between dots is very important, I'm going to be real standardized about this. I'm going to keep it in the center of my tile at the very bottom. And then... The last thing I need to do is put a Velcro dot on the back so that it can stick to um, my felt, which is going to be my blending board when I get to that part of the drill. So the way that I would do this drill if I had a student is I would make sure the tile is oriented correctly and I would pass them the tile or hold them the tile while they read it and they would just say, O oh, says ah. Or they'd say, ah. Oh. And then I would take the tile back and put it on my blending board where it belongs. All right, I'm going to leave this to the side for later because the next part of our drill is the auditory kinesthetic part. So I'm going to move all these tools out of the way. this. And I'm going to get out my muffin tin. I love this idea. I saw it on Pinterest a few years ago. Um, this muffin tin represents a braille cell. And the nice thing about it is it's very big for students who do have some um, usable sight, which is um, a majority of students who are visually impaired or blind. They have some usable sight. I'll move this up to where you can see. But even if they don't, it's very easy to feel and explore how the cells fit together. And you could even label the cells for yourself or for your student, one, two, three, four, five, six. So when we're doing this drill, I would say the sound is ah. And my student would use these tennis balls and build the letter O. And then they would say O says ah. They could even run their hand across it. O says ah. And that's going to help with some of the really tricky stuff. H, 
J, those letters that get really confused because they're very similar, that's going to really help with that because it's bigger. They're actually exploring the way to make it. They're going to build some of that muscle memory. When I'm making H, it's always going to be like this, and they're probably going to go in that same order every single time, how they make it. So they're building that muscle memory, and that's giving them another way to understand how the letter H is formed or the letter J is formed. It's going to be different. Okay, so that's going to be your auditory drill. So you would say the sound is ah, and then the student's going to build their letter O. O says ah. And they take everything out. This might take a little longer. That's okay. It might require the use of a tray to keep these balls from rolling everywhere. And then you'd say the sound is <sighs> and the student's going to build H and say <sighs> H says <sighs> and that's going to help build that automaticity. And then once you get to those contracted forms, you can have them build um, the contracted forms as well, or the, the words that are a single character in this as well. Once you get to um, some of the printed multi-letter multi -letter spelling patterns, such as your blends, um, your vowel teams, your diphthongs, those different things, you're going to need another muffin tin so that you can build those. And you might even need three muffin tins so you could build some of those longer blends like SQU or your vowel units like IGH. Those are three letters as well. All right, so you've done your visual, which is now a tactile drill. You've done your auditory kinesthetic. The last piece is the blending board piece. You can see this does not look like um, most of the blending boards that teachers of sighted students have in their classrooms or their intervention spaces. But what this is going to do is this is going to make it the appropriate size to display the braille characters. So I'm going to build a syllable. I have one here, H-E-M. The student will read eh, mm. Hem. And this is not perfect because the letters are spaced more than they should be, but for a beginning reader who's learning how to take those sounds and blend them, which is what the blending board is all about, that's going to be appropriate for them to kind of build a wall between each concept and then understand how the concepts fit together. <sighs> eh, mm, hem. And then I'm going to change it for my student. Maybe I'm going to make a nonsense syllable with my new letter. <sighs> ah, mm, hom. So that's what they're going to do for however many words or syllables, rather, that you would like to spell. And then, of course, as always, you can discuss, is hom a word? No, hom is not a word. Oh, but it could be a word part. It can be a part of hominy. So you can discuss the syllables just like you would at a blending board with sighted students. The last piece of the warm-up that is sometimes used, especially for um, students at a lower reading level, is the vowel intensive. And in my training, they recommended that we use vowel tense for the vowel intensive um, to have the student lift up the vowel tent and say, you know, ah, A says ah, when we review each vowel sound. Um, by itself and in syllables. For a visually impaired student, you might not want to do any tactile piece for this. You might just want to have them do the hand symbol for you. So you'd say the sound is ah, and they're going to put their hand under their chin and say ah, A says ah. Okay, so this wouldn't require anything at all. Now I've cleared off my table and there's nothing to really look at. Um, another thing that I've done that you might that you might consider doing with like a younger learner or more active learner, um, something that I've done with some of my kids who maybe have autism or dyspraxia or other conditions is I've had cups that represent the vowels, and I have students put a chip in the cup that goes with that vowel. The problem is that once you have five vowels, that's a lot of muscle memory to remember which cup goes with the vowel. So it's almost easier to just have them do the hand symbol or have them make um, the sign language letter 
many students with visual impairments I've noticed are excellent at sign. So you could have them sign. The sound is ah, they can tell you ah, a says ah. The sound is eh, eh, e says eh. So they could do that as well in addition to the hand symbols if that's something that they're interested in. But that piece I would recommend doing with no manipulatives as long as it's appropriate for your student. So to kind of recap, for your three-part drill, you're going to have your letter tiles, they're just Scrabble tiles with a Velcro and a Braille label sticker on. Oh, look, I made a word, a home. How lovely. You're going to have your muffin tin with tennis balls. These ones came from a thrift store, so they were very, very cheap, but they're not expensive if you buy them new. And then you're going to have just a piece of felt to be your blending board. It's going to be smaller, but remember you're going to be doing this one-on-one -on -one with your student. And then for the vowel intensive, you don't need any manipulatives at all, aside from the hand motions that your student is already using. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this information